Hi, my name is Andre Jack. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay because this is gonna be an epic video because the infinite money glitch is back. This is AMC. This is the thing that took GameStop from $2.50 a share to as high as $500. And it made a lot of people rich. It's the classic story of David versus Goliath. It was a movement that was fueled by Reddit. It was a movement that's fueled by anger to stick it to the hedge funds and make some money. And it made a lot of people rich. But not everyone was able to make money. So this AMC stock represents their second chance at making some money. I'm super excited to share this story because I actually flew some someone in from Philadelphia to help us explain the movement about what's going on and what's about to happen this coming week. He's a data scientist that studies the price and talks about AMC. So without further ado, let's just start the video and let's go meet him. good what's up thanks for having me thanks for being thanks for having me this is my youtube channel <laughs> thanks for coming on man appreciate what's it. going on cameras turn on you're like i'm a character now <laughs> so people have questions about what's going on with amc and i think the most important question that people have is how'd they get their butter so smooth actually fun fact no one knows without googling right now what amc stands for yeah, I had to actually Google that myself. <laughs> I'm an investor. I have no idea what it stands for. American movie theaters? American. That's AMT. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So disclosure time. Personally, I own zero dollars of AMC stock, but I've always been fascinated by this movement because I know what happened earlier this year with GameStop, and it seems like it's happening again with AMC. And for me, again, I have nothing invested in this situation, but I'd like to know if you're comfortable sharing how many stocks are how much money do you have outstanding exposed to this position? Oh, without a doubt. I am a proud, proud owner of AMC. And between my shares and my options, I have about $100,000 in exposure. A hundred grand. And that represents like 10%, 20% of your portfolio? Or... Oh, at this point, it's pretty much all of my portfolio. The <laughs> other part that is in AMC is GameStop. Okay. Diversification done well. <laughs> Can you please explain like what's going on with this whole movement? Because I've been fascinated by it, I've been watching it unfold, but I don't think a lot of people understand it, so that's why I wanted to have you kind of explain what's going on, what's about to happen, because as I understand it, there's kind of three main players in this whole narrative, the mm -hmm. David and the Goliath story. Can you kind of explain that? Yeah, I actually think that's probably the most important question of like, what's going on, why is this particular story resonating with so many people? Like, why is it resonating with me and so many apes out there? And I think it's that, it's the story of the 99 versus one, David versus Goliath, the, the underdog story. And in this, it's retail traders, the first Goliath, mm -hmm. versus Wall Street, the hedge funds betting against AMC, the next Goliath. And now there's kind of a new player has entered the game. It's that third Goliath, who's actually hedge funds that are also betting on AMC success. So right there, it's like sometimes the enemy of your enemy is actually a friend. Right, so the retail investors, which as I understand it is roughly 3.2 million people that are invested in AMC. Ah. <laughs> 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 $11 billion roughly outstanding invested in AMC. That's the first Goliath, the, the retail investor. And they're fighting against the short sellers, right? Mm -hmm. So just to quickly cover it, a short squeeze refers to any time a stock goes up in price really, really fast. And the reason that it's called a short squeeze is because it targets short sellers. Short sellers are people who bet on a stock to go down in price. And the way they do this is by short selling, which is a way of basically borrowing stock you don't technically own in hopes of later buying it back at a lower price. And the reason that it goes to a lower price is because anytime you have a bunch of short sellers, it can sometimes signal to the markets that Wait a minute, maybe these smart hedge funds know something ahead of time that we don't. Some bad news is about to come out, maybe we should follow in their footsteps. And that of course pushes the price even lower. 
But sometimes, every now and again, the retail investor is smart enough to see through the lie, and what they'll do is they'll buy up a bunch of the stock, which of course drives the price higher, and once the price reaches a certain target level, it will force these short sellers and these hedge funds to buy back this stock to cover their positions at a higher price, which of course, because they're buying it at a higher price, will force the stock to go even higher. Now, naked short selling is another thing you'll hear in this video, which refers to the exact same process, except it's done while being naked. It refers to the exact same process of borrowing shares, except in this case, the shares you borrow don't actually exist. This is because the broker or the market maker never sourced those shares properly. Sometimes they're also called synthetic shares, and this process is actually illegal because what it does is it artificially inflates the supply of the stock, but because the demand stays flat, the price of the stock actually goes down. So by getting rid of these naked short sellers, you actually help correct the price higher, which of course, remember, helps with the first part of the short squeeze. Again, this is illegal, but it still happens in the stock market all the time. So what is the mentality of the people investing in this stock? Because as I see it, a lot of people's lives have been changed if they got in early enough. I know some people have paid off their mortgages, their student loans, their medical bills, like their lives have been changed, which is awesome. But at the same time, there seems to be a lot of risk because it's also somewhat disconnected from any kind of reality or fundamentals. Is it just diamond hands all the way? 100% <laughs> diamond hands all the way. People, apes are hodling this stock absolutely to the moon. And that's the concept. It's more of the... Um, you have my back, I have your back, and I agree with that. Sometimes at a certain price level, it is disconnected from fundamentals, from technicals, but it makes sense because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. That's a, it's an amazing social cultural movement. And it just so happens that the scoreboard is AMC's stock chart. That's cool, I like that. You know, it might just be easier that I show you what it's like to be an ape. All right, I'm down. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. I can relate as a crypto guy. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> what is gonna happen on June 2nd? There's a lot of questions of people being like, oh, what's gonna happen on June 2nd, Wednesday? What's, what's gonna happen? This is a very important question for the Ape Nation. Two important things are happening on June 2nd. <laughs> Vape Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, that's so funny. What's gonna happen? On June 2nd, there's two important things happening. First is the record date. This means if you own AMC shares on June 2nd, you will be able to participate in the next shareholder vote at the end of July. But, but why am I messing up potentially? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Cameras are on. The end of July, but, but why can I not say that? But more important- Because the camera's on. Yeah. This, uh, but, but, it's the B -B 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 yeah. but more importantly is actually also the recount dates, the start of a share recount. So basically what's happening here is they're gonna do a forensic in-depth look into who owns AMC. Mm -hmm. We're gonna find out all the retail traders, how many they own, where they are, and really this is where the important thing comes in. We find out all the illegal, illicit, synthetic shares that are prompted from naked shorting. I guess the goal is to find out how many of those naked short positions were in the stock market to begin with, just mm. to get a better idea. And how long does this process last? To the best of my understanding, as they get verified valid information from the start of June to the end of the July, the leadership team will be sharing that with us. Okay, so it's gonna trickle out June and then probably hopefully finish by July. Exactly. So the next question I have then is, why are the hedge funds so stubborn with their money? Obviously, they already got hurt with GameStop. They know that there's 3.2 million retail investors going against them with AMC. Why are they still pouring billions of dollars into a position they know they're probably gonna lose money? That's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. In all honesty, it doesn't make sense to me either. Good talk. It's not just <laughs> 3.2 million investors, it's 3.2 million apes. Wow. It is people who are refusing to give up on this fight. And I've thought about this, of why they keep fighting against this ape community. And the only reasonable explanation I can come up with, it's a ego play, a pride play, a hubris play. It's, it's 
refusing to admit that they made a bad trade. Right. An ape strong. Hold on. You, you've used this word ape a lot. And mm. for people that are watching this video, maybe they don't understand. Teach me how to be an ape. Teach me some of the terminologies of apenology. I don't know. <laughs> how do you become an ape? Well, to start that, we have to do one thing. What's that? Right, that's cut. Let's throw your shirt on. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's cut the video. Just turn the shirt on. <laughs> nice. This was not pre-planned at all. Perfect cut. <laughs> Perfect cut. Wait, this is not apes, though. These are ducks. Why am I a duck? That's more of just uh, <laughs> in my little live stream world here. Just, you know, sometimes when you talk about socks, you got to be a little bit more serious. You got to wear that button down. Are you selling merch? Is this what this is? <laughs> He's like, and you can get this at the link down below. I right, got it on. Teach me, senpai. Well, to start off as a new ape, I would recommend knowing three important terms. First of all, just call you an ape. That is a member of the ape nation, the AMC army, someone who you just need a share and you're diamond handing it to the moon. Got it. Next one. To the moon, that's that's where we're going on this rocket ship with AMC. Stock going to the moon, and basically it's just how high is this one gonna go? And the final one, a, a good one, more about time base of when Lambo. Mm. When's it going to the moon so you can buy yourself that Lambo? How many bananas you have invested in this? <laughs> Many. About 100,000 bananas in exposure to AMC. That's kind, of, kind of a lot. <laughs> I prefer to keep my bananas here and there, you know? Maybe not like a bunch in one place. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so let's talk price, because a lot of people are asking about where this stock is going to mm. potentially go, and everyone is talking about it going to the moon. I hear this phrase a lot, obviously. The moon? Where? Where is the moon? What's the moon? What is the price target? Well, we're going to the moon, but don't forget, First, you have to go to the stratosphere. Yeah, let's go to the stratosphere. Let's do it. All right. This is the modern day ape man. Evolved throughout the millennia with diamond hands, we present the ape man, AMC edition. Now playing in all AMC theaters on the moon. Void where prohibited except in Indiana. Price-wise, I have read estimates anywhere between $100,000 a share to as high as half a million dollars a share. Now, there is a stock that's worth over 100 k Berkshire Hathaway, but it also has a lot less stocks on the market. So for AMC to get to 100 k its market cap would have to be something like $50 trillion, which is also two and a half times the yearly US GDP, or basically the value of the entire US stock market combined. Now I'm not saying that's impossible, I really do hope for the best, but it's probably about as realistic as my magic tricks. So the path to getting there though is of course with the short squeeze, which is what this week is all about. All right, so after the squeeze happens, which apparently is gonna start this week, right? What is a realistic price target? I mean, is there a way to calculate that? With this, we're definitely looking for an amazing amount of fireworks this upcoming week. Lots of volume, lots of volatility, but it's one of those things for a price target, it's mathematically very tough to answer. Mathematically. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new science. There's some crude math you could do to look for all the shorts to cover, and that's what a lot of the apes are looking for. It's like, we want all of the shorts to cover to get out of the position, and there's some math you could do to see how high it would go but it's not accounting for other very important forms of buying pressure, including FOMO buying and gamma squeezes, but that alone is a whole nother can of worms. But at the end of the day, when you boil it all down, a short squeeze, a gamma squeeze, and FOMO buying is all different types of buying pressure that pushes the stock sky high. Explain in a nutshell the difference between short squeezes and gamma squeezes. Short squeeze, shorts get out, pushes it up. Gamma squeeze, market makers are buying shares because of what's going on in the options market also pushes it up. Got it, that's awesome. And then long-term investing, is this something that people should consider long-term investing in or has the train already left? Personally, remember, not a financial advisor. <laughs> I'm just a duck in an ape shirt. I do like AMC for the long-term. I think if you look at this year, they're looking for about $5 billion in the box office. Next year, they're looking to increase to 8 billion. But with that being said, I don't think this is the point I would hop in for a long-term investment. For me, my newest purchases of shares and options is more playing for the squeeze. And then depending on how the squeeze really plays out, if you personally like AMC for the long-term, I think you wait for this particular storyline to settle down and then you go from that point. Is there any advice that you can give to anyone watching this video, whether they're invested in the stock or like myself who is not invested in the stock, is there anything you wanna leave with? My main piece of advice would be to just sit back and enjoy the ride. 
It cuts back to us on the roller coaster. Ah! <laughs> that was That's, such uh, a yeah. great way yeah, to yeah, end yeah. it. Should we redo that? Yeah. Like, was that good enough to do that if we do it and then it's like a splice into the roller coaster? Yeah, see, this is how videos on YouTube get filmed. <laughs> <laughs> This is a Wendy's. I want to thank Matt Horse for coming on. Thanks, man. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description below the video. In the meantime, don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin using this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre. Then go get your two free stocks with Weeble with the link down below. When you deposit $100, you'll get two free stocks, each of which can be valued up to $1,850. Once you do that, go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday. Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. Bye-bye. And good luck to all the apes.